Hello everyone this is Siddharth Mehta mentor at career launch of Bhilai I have with me Sarthak Gupta Sarthak Gupta is the all India topper in the VARC section of CAT 21 yes I have with me 100 percentile of CAT 21 in VARC section and his overall percentile stands at 99.93 amazing feat uh, Sarthak Uh, let me tell you a few more things about Sarthak. Sarthak has done his engineering from Bits Pilani. Uh, right now, he is working with his father. He has joined his father in his business, and uh, this was his second attempt uh, in uh, second attempt to cut. And and in the first attempt, he secured around ninety two percentile. And this year, uh, the the trajectory has increased like or uh, improved like anything. And ninety nine point nine three with a uh, hundred percentile in VRC. So. Uh, welcome sarthak amazing feat and i'm sure that um, you must be extremely satisfied and your parents must be extremely proud of your achievement thank you for those very kind words sir and hello to everyone right so uh, what what's the i i mean how how long did it take to sink that you have got 100 percentile in barc or any section it's a big thing so uh, let me take you back to the day when the cat response sheets came out so mm-hmm. bef- so before that we had the option of filling up our attempts on cl's website that i have attempted around these many questions i as i estimate that these many will be correct these many will be wrong so at that point of time cl had given me a predicted score of 103 so why this this was because i had estimated that i had gotten around 16 questions right in varc and eight wrong let me tell you the thinking behind it because in all of my previous mocks this had this had been a very constant figure that i would get around 3 4 questions wrong in rc around 3 4 wrong in ba so in the end it came out as 16 right 8 wrong and a score of around 40 to 45 almost constantly like i got a, a 99 percentile in a lot of my mocks in varc but never even a 99.5 in my mock so that should tell you how good cat was for me Okay. So, so uh, uh, let's come to the point that I could not believe it. Yeah, sorry about skipping over that. So yeah. now let's jump to the day on which the response sheets came out. So uh, I got the response sheet. I, at at that point of time, nobody had uploaded the score calculators at that point of time. So I was manually checking my score. So RC like. Okay, so the first passage has four answers, correct? Very nice. The next passage has three, and now I'm estimating that I would have gotten around two to two two questions correct in the next passage. But no, fourteen questions correct out of sixteen, and then comes VA, which I will be very honest with you has been the bane of my existence when uh, existence when it comes to VARC. On that day, as I'm taking through my answers, all right, correct, 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 all eight of them correct. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. so you must have rechecked it again yes yes at, at least thrice all right yeah yeah but but see the, that that is the end result part and of course as you are saying you might think that you you were a bit lucky but you know uh, there must have been some effort some hard work behind that that luck and luck may have favored you but as you told you have got uh, 99% a few times how was your preparation like for the varc Okay, so CL has a very good recorded set of lectures from Jijo Srinivasan, which is called VARC One Thousand. I enrolled for that as soon as it came out on the website because I had been looking at the content the year before, and like there is a set of free lectures that is offered at the beginning of the course for week one. Even at that point, hearing through those videos, I knew that whenever this course comes around the next year, I have to get it as soon as possible. so there is a particular week of lectures which is given by jijo which is called uh, detecting option traps this comes in week 3 of the course and uh, when i went through those videos i realized that uh, many a times the mistake that i made was instead of looking at the passage critically i tried to find an option which sounded right to me which mm-hmm. i think i have realized over ha huh, so like gut feeling and like at this point i have realized that vrc is not about gut feeling at least when it comes to the options it is about the fact that you really need to read the passage like it doesn't matter if you like the content or not but you really need to read through it what it's trying to say 
do not try to push through your opinions on it so and then of course like i said that detecting the option traps is very important and gjo's videos had a lot of like good methods to identify what kind of uh, option traps the question setter can create and so i can say like very uh, like honestly that v3 alone help improve my rc scores a lot va i simply try to solve as many questions as i could and trying to get the feel that okay what is a good flow for para jumbles para summaries i had been good with even in the previous year and odd sentence para jumbles i just had like over the course of my preparation i realized that you need to look you do not really need to arrange the remaining four sentences so much as you need to eliminate one if you can do that like that is the first step after that you can try to rearrange the other four to confirm your answer sometimes i didn't have the time to do that so of course i didn't do it but that is the good technique to do it and in when i was giving cat i had around 5 minutes to tackle through my para jumbles so yes i was actually able to implement this method and it worked Okay. and let let us talk about the other sections as well uh, of course what was the prep, what was your weak part i mean quant lrdi barc any any section that you think was perhaps we LR, were really lrdi yes my lrdi section was weak i got a 20.41 out of 60 which amounted to a 90 percentile so mm -hmm. the reason that i scored low in dilr is that uh, i made mistakes with one or two questions in each set and the thing is that you should ideally not do that when you solve a set you solve it in its entirety so that you can get the return on the time you have invested in that set get all of them right even if you do not get to attempt another set in its entirety and uh, mm -hmm. i thought that i was pressed for time during slot 1's dilr and i just attempted the two uh, four question sets like for the most for the largest amount of time and when i went to a six question set one of them i realized that i should have attempted this i did not so a mistake in the strategy but hey that's life qa on the other, yeah yeah for lrdi so uh, again i took the recorded set of lectures called dilr 1000 from cl itself and of course the books provided by arun sharma for dilr and coming to quant i'm sure you must have scored very high in quant as well because if one section in if in one section you have scored 90 percentile that means in quant you must have scored 99.5 quant, quant was of. decent no, uh, it's 99.4 yeah. actually i got a 39.17 okay. out of 66 okay. so yeah quant uh, like it's not always like quant has been a section that was consistent like it will oscillate from 98.5 percentile to 99.5 percentile in my mocks so the trick behind it is that uh, i focused on arithmetic algebra and geometry solely like these were my strong sections i realized that at a very early point in my preparation of course i tried to look through modern maths a bit of pnc honestly but uh, i realized that I, and numbers of course sorry to skip that but i realized that more often than not i end up giving a lot of time to those questions which leads me to not go through the easy questions not easy but this questions that i'm actually strong in no matter how much time it takes me to go through an arithmetic question i know that compared to other people i can solve it a bit quicker so let me focus on that that and that is what i did during my actual cat as well santak how many mocks uh, did you take during your preparation Okay, so CL I took around fifteen mocks, and IMS I took around ten mocks. I kept both the test series so that I could have so a variety of problems. Uh, yes, this is it, these twenty-five mocks are for this year and uh, for this particular year. I think yes, you totally this year. Last year also. Okay, yes. so both the year combined, you must have taken around how many mocks? Last year I did not take a lot of mocks. I think last year it was only around twelve to thirteen. Not a lot of mocks. this is very important now since you have said that uh, last year you did not take as many mocks what changes do you think helped you one you told gjo's video helped you to to score more this year any yes. other thing that helped you to score uh, more uh, in cat this year as compared to last year so after every mock ended so cl has a very good analysis page where this particular one where it shows you how many people attempted this question and how many people got it right so attempts percentage and accuracy percentage so 
and one day i simply tried ki hey can i copy this entire set of data to a spreadsheet i did that it happened and from that day onwards i put up a spreadsheet on my uh, google mail that i could write i could literally put my notes about the mock there itself so i went through every uh, sections uh, question so suppose i'll take the narci passage so for four questions the first column would have something about the passage itself that were you able to read this passage in time and given the fact that it also measures the amount of time you took on that question it actually helped me understand yeah how long did i take so my main concern was the fact that am i attempting questions first that are easy to do which means that did they have high accuracy attempts really don't matter the fact that matters is if even a low amount of people attempted it but they got it right those are the questions that you really need to target so putting up this spreadsheet on my like putting up this spreadsheet and going through it and creating a sort of diary for myself that helped my preparation a lot great uh, i i mean this is for everyone who is uh, watching this uh, if you see any topper uh, telling the success mantra this will be a common theme analysis and i people can have different ways to analyze the test but this this remains a constant taking mocks and whatsoever number of mocks you take analyzing them understanding your strengths and weakness sarthak i know that you cleared ipm integrated program in management of iim indore yes. and you got the final admission in iim indore after class 12th itself uh, and and uh, there was a pleasant happy situation with you that that you had bits pilani also in hand and uh, i am in door offer you chose bits yes. pilani at that point in time uh, anything that you had in mind when when you were choosing bits pilani that you later on you will do management or or, or simply it it happened simply after during your engineering that you wanted to shift to management i think to be very honest it has always been a name in life to pursue a management degree at some point or the other in my life but uh, at that point of time what bits offered was a stellar peer group a very challenging environment and given the fact that they offer a lot of academic flexibility so for people who don't know this bits gives you the option to have zero attendance although don't fall for this trap that you don't attend any classes but that is simply to tell you that bits believes in the philosophy that you should do what you want to do it's not about ki matlab if you should pursue grades only of course it's very good if you keep your grades good but uh, the fact is the environment is such that people can do whatever the hell they want they can pursue an idea of their own they can excel at an academic level whatever they want to do they can do independent projects and the professors help a lot over there so this was my thinking about going to bits post which i started working for a bit and eventually i gave cat because of two reasons first of all it's a great mental exercise let me tell you this simply if you give cat it refreshes your mind a bit and this year when like given the fact that i got a 92 percentile last year it was like okay i really need to give an honest attempt this year so that if for no one else i am satisfied with my efforts that's all okay uh But see, see, uh, when when you come uh, with with good results, say in exam like that, all we talk about is the preparation of last six month or one year. But I know you. Uh, you have been an avid reader, I think, from for quite some time now. And uh, by, I I mean, it, whether I should call it as a God gift or whether I should say that during the formative years you must have focus more on the quant part your mathematics and english both are naturally good i mean maybe because you read a lot or or it has gifted i don't know so so uh, tell me something more about how uh, did you prepare for these things during school any specific effort you made uh, so i really got into reading properly when i was in class 3 the first book that i really remember reading is a children's version of charles dickens david copperfield loved the book okay. it got me hooked to reading prose a lot more i like this is a very negative point for me that i don't i'm not very patient with poetry as i am with prose but like that's a preference although i have gone through some very good poems pablo neruda's poems are something that if you get the opportunity to go through everyone should they are very thoughtful they are very poignant at some points and like just go through them so 
at that point of time i started reading heavily so my formative years from class 3 to class 12 were filled with a lot of reading for of, of fictional books you could take any classics any modern book like any books like even harry potter some books by on modified indian mythology like by amish tripathi or ashwin sanghi some of them like i did not really go through non fiction books at this point of my at this point of time but when i got into college i got exposed to books like uh, stephen covey's seven habits of highly effective people recently the book the psychology of money has come out which a lot of people have been touting as the next best thing out of non fiction i have a book on quantum marketing by an iim alum, alumnus who talks about his ideas on the future of marketing so exciting times and see the fact is that reading has been a family habit as well my mom reads a lot my late grandfather used to read read a lot my maternal grandmother actually published her collection of stories in odia about 10 years ago so there's a bit of legacy factor to it as well and simply i love i love reading and i still do talking about the legacy your father himself is i am cozy cold pass out yes i think first batch or second batch of imk if i'm not wrong yeah like it was early days i don't like they didn't even have a proper imk campus then like if you look at the campus today my father is like i should have gotten to go there he got to visit right. the campus for his re- reunion right now so yeah yeah uh yeah sarthak so now you have uh, 99.93% tile in front of you and i'm sure you will be getting call from i am ahmedabad bangalore calcutta i mean every college should actually ideally uh, call you for the interview how are you gearing up for the next round i'm preparing for pi with cl again cl speedp personalized course and the mentorship there is really great up to now i'm sure that when the mock interviews come up they will give me a lot of good feedback and i have been collaborating at a bit of my peers as well who prepared for cat and did well this year peers from bits right so sarthak thank you very much for being part of uh, this interview and it's really nice talking to you knowing that that um, uh, you you have i i mean it may look like a one year uh, effort but it is actually cumulative of everything that you have done so final words for the aspirants and keep in mind if you can if you can keep in mind those people who are not exposed to the way you have been exposed to the books and reading habit and perhaps inclination towards quantitative ability or for someone who has not been exposed to this thing what will be what 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 success mantra will you will you like to share i would suggest that think about a field that you are interested to learn about and there will definitely be a book about it doesn't matter if it's very well written does it has a very like basic vocabulary just pick it up start reading then apart from that newspapers are a very good way of building your vocabulary and reading abilities as well and uh, i would actually suggest that it doesn't matter the language which you read in if you really like reading hindi newspapers start with that then try to shift the same to your english newspapers so that you can actually work on the language skills that you need to tackle the cat then for quant skills i would suggest i don't think there's anything to be scared of when it comes to quant for cat think about this fact that there are many people who did not have great scores in math when they gave cat but given the fact that like with some maturity and some really cool calm preparation they went through books they went through like they developed tricks for themselves it's not so much the fact that someone else gives you tricks and you remember them when you go for your prep you learn the fact that yeah i can make this calculation faster with a very slight tweak it happens in your head so give it some time no, nothing is going to happen without a bit of initial effort and the initial effort is going to be the toughest phase when you st- and the first thing that i would suggest is even if you have not started a prep give a mock learn where you are it will give you an idea of where you should focus your prep on first and whichever section is the weakest for you i would suggest you focus your energies there then you can go move on to feel like it's not the fact that i will prepare for dilr alone i would prefer for vrc alone you're giving a paper for 2 hours and not 40 minutes which which is a fact that you should remember so start preparing that's all arthak bang on i i mean let me summarize uh, 
his his success mantras for the aspirants first whatever field you are interested in pick a book from that field and read uh, and and i will 100% agree with this thing i mean rather than focusing or asking people that what book i should read simply pick up a book from say if you are a football lover pick up a book from that field second Uh, most of the people run are are afraid of maths and they simply run away from it there is no need to do that uh, very important and uh, a very very relevant point which sarthak has said now a normal average student when they come to us they they ask us for tricks now there are no such thing as tricks that's a magic you cannot learn magic by looking at someone performing it you have to develop your own ways as sarthak said you you try to understand the concept and you develop your own tricks that's the third thing and the fourth thing is take mock right at the beginning so that you know where, where you stand and you can work upon your weaknesses thank you sarthak uh, very much all very relevant points that you have shared with the aspirants and i wish you all the best and may you get the dream college you should get the dream college after after uh, doing so well in the exam thank you very much thank you for your support as well sir and thank bye you. everyone bye